Greetings everyone, Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Favorite Live Album by Year. We have arrived at 1984 as we continue on throughout September. 30 days, 30 favorite live albums, 30 runners up. So uh, 1984, pretty good year. Not a ton of great live albums, but a, a handful of really good ones from strong contenders. Uh, for me, it, it kind of came down to three and I had to kind of make it two, obviously. Um, my number one, though, was a foregone conclusion. Uh, I kind of hinted at this one a couple of days back, but uh, I really love this live album a lot. I love this dude so much. I miss him so much. Uh, this was released, uh, obviously, in 1984, recorded February throughout February and June 1984 at various dates uh, at uh, Harpo's Concert Theater in Detroit, the Nippon Budokan in Tokyo, Hammersmith Odeon in London, and the Ulster Hall in Belfast, uh, released on the 10 label the virgin label virgin records gary moore we want more uh man it's by far my favorite live album by him i think it's just absolutely terrific uh this is uh you know a pretty hot band for gary basically this is uh gary on lead vocals and guitars uh neil carter on keyboards backing vocals i think he sings lead on a song or two also uh rhythm guitar craig gruber on bass of course, Greg, member from Elf. Uh, Phil Lanat appears on bass and lead vocals on one track. You got Ian Pace on drums, uh, Bobby Queen Art also on drums, Paul Thompson on drums. So yeah, so throughout that tour, Gary kind of had a revolving cast of musicians uh, based on you know other things they were doing with obviously uh, Ian Pace getting ready to go do the Deep Purple thing, right? Uh, Jimmy Nail also appears on backing vocals on one track, but uh, a killer, killer set list. I love the production on it. I think it's got some of Gary's most ferocious. Uh, live playing and some of his most beautiful playing you know kicks off we've got murder in the skies really heavy shapes of things just kills on here with some great guitar work uh, you got victims of the future you know right then boom 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 man hit you really hard uh, then you got cold hearted next up slow things down a little bluesier a little more mid-paced uh, then you got ends of the world which of course has all the crazy soloing and you know gary moore shredding going on gary of course singing lead vocals on this here on the studio album on quarters of power it's jack bruce singing lead vocals uh, then you're going way back into the gary moore catalog for back on the streets you got so far away a Gorgeous Empty Rooms with just a really tasty guitar solo on there. Uh, Don't Take Me for a Loser. Rockin' and rollin', rockin' and rollin', rockin' and rollin'. And then you get the, the bonus track here um, on the CD, which is uh, Parisian Walkways. Of course, the great duet that he does with uh, Phil. Absolutely beautiful. Just a, an amazing live album. I just love it, love it, love it. Let's see if there's anything interesting to show in here. There's Mr. Mr. Moore. Missed this guy so much. One of the greats, one of my favorite players of all time. Uh, there he is. So that is my number one pick. Like I said, this was a... Uh, I, I knew going in that this would be my favorite. Picking the, the runner-up was a little more difficult. But ultimately, I went with this one because I think it's just a really great full, you know, live double album. Uh, this was released March 16th, 1984. Uh, recorded the 22nd and 23rd of uh, 1983 in July uh, at the Hammersmith Oni in London, uh, produced by uh, the main guy in the band, who I'll mention in a second, uh, released on the Vertigo label as well as the Warner Brothers here in the U.S., uh, produced by Mark Knopfler, talking about Alchemy, Dire Straits Live. You know, for whatever reason, when they released this on CD, now this is an old CD, they may have remastered this in recent years, I don't know, I haven't gotten it, but you got the kind of the two, instead of just putting it all in one set and all that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, Alchemy, this is really good. So this is, uh, like I said, it's a cl another classic Hammersmith show, uh, Mark Knopfler on guitar and vocals. You got Alan Clark on keyboards, John Ilsley on bass guitar, backing vocals, Hal Lindis on guitar, backing vocals, and Terry Williams on drums with some additional help on saxophone and keyboards from Mel Collins. Man, does, is there any place that Mel Collins does not show up? Uh, Tommy Mandel on keys and Jupe de Corte on percussion. So, you know, what do you get on here? Two parts you get uh, a, a killer, Once Upon a Time in the West. Uh, Expresso Love is fast-paced and fun. You got a absolutely breathtaking Romeo and Juliet. Uh, Love Over Gold, absolutely amazing on here. I love the fact that they make some of these, uh, they turn some of these live versions into, you know, big and, and epic. Uh, just absolutely fantastic. Um, Private Investigations, <sighs> so good. 
Sultan's a Swing is epic on here. It's over 10 minutes in length. You've got uh, Two Young Lovers, Tunnel of Love. Tunnel of Love is absolutely brilliant on here and, uh, and, and that incorporates other things in that song as well. It's epic. It's like, what, like uh, 15 minutes long or something like that. Uh, you got Telegraph Road, which is also big and epic. Epic guitar soloing there. And then you got, uh, to finish it all off, Solid Rock, Going Home, and Theme from Local Hero. Um, just fantastic stuff. It's a great sounding live album, too. Really, really cool. I, I should, now that I, you know, I'm talking about this, I really should look up to see if this has been remastered and repackaged and reissued because I'd be interested in checking that out. So there you have it. Uh, my winner today, We Want More from Gary Moore. My runner up, Alchemy, Dire Straits Live. All good stuff. All good stuff. Um, yeah, Real to Real by Marillion was my number three, just so you guys know. Um, but yeah, so down in the comments below, please uh, put in your favorite album, live album from 1984. Remember, this is live albums, folks. I get everybody occasionally who, a couple people who put in their studio albums. No, this is all about live albums. So put in your favorite uh, live album from 1984 and your runner-up, and we'll be doing this again tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day as we finish up going all the way through to 1998. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, tune in tomorrow for another episode of Favorite Live album by year and then on sunday we've got album homework assignment with lewis nasser and chris allo you do not want to miss that that was a lot of fun so stay tuned for that and then of course the week starts over all again with the hudson valley squares on monday night where we will be talking about some of our favorite rock and roll films so you know those rock and roll biopics documentaries comedies musicals dramas whatever if it involves a rock and roll theme that's what we're talking about so uh, we'll be each be talking about some of our favorites so let's tune into that and a lot more coming up on the channel including uh 1974 in the prog seat so tuesday night we will be talking about some of our favorite our five favorite albums prog albums prog fusion albums from 1974 so that should be loads of fun so stay tuned we'll see you then visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org we're on facebook we're on twitter of course we are on youtube all the damn time thanks for watching see you real soon i'm p pardo take care bye-bye